testing. Hi. Good afternoon, everyone. I am Tiffany Standard, founder and CEO of We Are Mint, and I will be moderating today's panel, Future of the On-Demand Workforce. I'm going to start by welcoming our guests. So we have Alex Evelyn, co-founder and CEO of Liquid Talent. Alex is the co-founder and CEO of Liquid Talent, a new generation job platform revolutionizing how world-changing companies discover, connect, and hire exceptional talent. And I'm gonna let him give you a little bit more background about himself as well as his company. Alex? Hello, everyone. Thanks so much for having me. Stephanie, thanks. Um, so my name is Alex Ablin. Um, I started Liquid Talent a couple of years ago after spending seven and a half years at Google. I'm from the, from the Bay Area. Worked at Google from 2005 to 2013. My most recent stint at Google was in Chelsea, New York, where I was public affairs manager and built the Wi-Fi network in Chelsea that's still operating today. Left Google in the spring of, of 13 and started Liquid Town in the fall of 13 with really a new vision of how we're going to professionally connect. I see a very different world in the future than the way it operates today with how we source and hire talent. I'm looking at a different world around mobility, independence, lifestyle. I'm a big proponent of the gig economy and micropreneurs, and that's what Liquid Talent really facilitates towards. Awesome. So we're going to welcome our second guest, Naveen Hassan. Hey. He is the founder and CEO of GoMother, and a text message-based digital personal assistance service. Prior to founding GoButler, Naveen worked for Rocket Internet, where he served as a co-founder and managing director of Zipset. I'm going to let him give you more information about his background as well as his company, Go Butler. Thank you so much, Tiffany. So, uh, yeah, so we, I co-founded uh, Go Butler earlier this year. What we are, we're essentially your digital assistant, your one-stop shop to get whatever you need. Right? And uh, obviously, you know, we're very fond of the gig economy. Um, we, you know, we are solving a big problem, which is really people don't know which app to use when. And, you know, you, you seem to have like seven, eight on-demand apps for one problem on your phone. You really want to solve that problem by being your one-stop shop, your first access point for whatever you need cross verticals, uh, uh, all text-based, right? Awesome, so today we're gonna discuss how will the future of on-demand and consolidation of apps impact the value of this market and the number of people working under 1099s. So Liquid Talent focuses on talent and we have Go Butler that focuses on how consumers can use on-demand to help in their personal lives, like you said, kind of using multiple apps, using one app to find whatever you need after getting off of a job at 1099 possibly find something easy, food, laundry, whatever it may be. So I'm going to ask the first question. How big is the gig economy now? And how big do you expect it to grow in the next five to 10 years? Like, what do you see now? And what do you see now for your company in the next five to 10 years? I'm going to start with. Sure. I mean, so obviously, I think, you know, the on the, the gig or the on-demand economy is, is on its way to, you know, fundamentally change the way that we're behaving. I think Uber is a great example of, you know, really how you know, everyone pretty much all in this room, you know, is, is, is using transportation, in, you know, in a very, very different way than they were a few years ago, right? And I think this will continue to develop itself in a variety of verticals. I think we're, this is, you know, I think to answer a question, it's already huge, but this is the beginning. I think this is the beginning of, you know, a lot of changes. And, you know, we're talking about work, workforce and uh, you know, I think the, the, the government is working towards these businesses to help these businesses uh, find a way to, you know, to, to scale with you know, the, right, you know, the right structure of, of, of staffing too, right? So I think you know, Uber is a great example, Handy is a great example, Postmates is a great example of you know, how these 1099 workers are of, you know, of essential use to people's daily lives. And I think what we do uh, on that is really, again, you know, help people in the discovery process. So what we found out, I think, you know, Alex is saying, you know, Google, I think on desktop, it's very clear to you what you do when you're looking for something. You literally go on Google, you type in the keyword, and then, you know, you go through a bunch of transaction funnels and you order what you need. And on mobile, I mean, mobile is another huge trend besides on demand. You, there, it's very, very different, right? You don't go to search, you don't go to app store and put in like pizza. Uh, you really need to know the name of the app, right? So. Uh, the big discovery problem is, is what we want to solve, you know, in addition to the retention problem, which is another, these are the two biggest problems all these on-demand apps are having. I mean, I just mentioned a few big ones, but there are a lot of very niche on-demand apps, 
which are going to have problems to scale. Uh, you know, because like performance marketing, Google marketing is doesn't just just doesn't have the search volumes for them to scale. Um, so those are the two problems that we're trying to solve again, like to you know find help people. Hey, if I know as a gold butler that you uh, want you know that you had a, your dry cleaning picked up the other day, I might you know suggest you very relevant laundry app just as an example, right? And I might help you remind you use that app. Uh, and, to, and to drive retention. But essentially, again, to, it's, it's already huge and it's only gonna get bigger. Although I believe there's gonna be this, you know, a lot of consolidation. Again, people are not gonna want to remember 50 different brands in their head. Uh, there is a lot of, you know, honestly, fluff out there right now too in the on-demand space. Um, I don't think that every, like every single very niche app has the, the, you know, the right economic right to, to be there. But you know, I think this is what happens you know, when a new industry really develops. It starts off, and then you know there is going to be consolidation, and things will structurally change. But you know, Alex, they want to take everything too quick. What about you, Alex? And I know working with 1099s and the future of on-demand workers, which is really big because everybody's consulting now. I know a lot of corporate people now working in different co-working spaces because they're going back and forth between offices. What do you see as the future for the gig economy as well? I mean, the gig economy, of course, it's here, and of course, it's real, and it's only going to go go bigger. So. You know, the on-demand space has really done wonderful for some of the more blue-collar workforce generation, but it hasn't really entered into the white-collar generation. The, the, the middle to upper band of talent still isn't tapped into like the handies or the home joys of, of the world. And what Liquid Talent is trying to do is really build a marketplace of vetted, exceptional labor force. We're focused on technical and creative industries right now, um, but that's going to expand over time. Uh, we're in stealth mode right now, so I can't talk too much about the product. But there's no real company addressing that upper band. After going to school at Berkeley, working at Google, I left and I said, how do I become my own independent professional? Right? I want to work from anywhere at any time. I want to care about my lifestyle. Right? I, the independent marketplace is massive. Right? So free, Freelancers Union and Upwork just did, a, just did a report. There's 53 million freelancers in the country today. That number is going to go to 80 million by 2020. And the question that we pose is, where are they going to find work? How are they going to connect with each other? How are they going to operate? Um, you know, WeWork's valuation of 10 billion just recently really signal, signals to the market that everything's kind of up for grabs right now, right? The way that we work, how we find each other, where we work, um, it, it's a really new frontier and uh, I'm, I'm just thrilled to be part of that conversation and, and hopefully Liquid Talent can connect the dots for that upper tier professional. So how will the future of on-demand and consolidation of apps impact the way workers and consumers interact? So getting daily work done, personal tax done, is people really migrating towards on demand, like being okay with somebody picking up their laundry or, you know, or finding 1099 uh, workers for a certain tasks that they may need. Um, so what is the future of that? Yeah. So I'd love to talk a little bit about the consumer side, Alex, if you can pick up on the, on the workforce stuff. So I think we're already seeing that, right? So, um, you know, it will fundamentally change the way people behave. It will change people's habits. It's, it is already, right? And I think those are, you know, historically have been the most powerful businesses, the businesses that really fundamentally change the way you interact, the way you behave, the way you're, again, I don't want to mention Uber, I'm not here to promote Uber, but like Uber really fundamentally changed a lot of different things, you know, in, in your daily life. And this is happening across a number of different verticals. At the end of the day, you know, people, especially in the city like New York, they're looking for convenience. They're looking for things that are gonna make their lives easier, they're gonna save them time or money, right? And a lot of these on-demand apps go there, right? They get you something, they get you access to something, you know, either just quicker or, or just more efficient that you didn't have before. And if you're solving a problem like that, you know, th there's, a huge, there's a huge future for that, right? We're living in a very instant gratification world right now, where we don't have the patience to use a phone or to use a fax. It's all about now, right? So that that part of our new kind of psychology of the masses is happening in the upper tier workforce as well, right? When I started Liquid Talent, I needed a UI UX designer. I didn't have three months to wait to source and find that person. I really needed that person now. So you think about location, you think about having a, a vetted community, you think about access to talent on demand in real time. You know, people are taking up second, third jobs in this on-demand labor economy now to help pad their to help pad their wages. But again, I just don't see it happening in in, in a very skilled labor force. I see it in a much lower band. So, you know, for us, it's I, I, I need that talent. I need it now. I need a lawyer that's not full time. I need a designer that's not full time. Right? I, I don't need a very heavy full time staff, but I need help. 
I need expertise, and that's the world that we're more that we're going to be moving more and more into. I would use yeah. it. I'd use it right now. Great. Well, thank you. Welcome to Stealth Mode, man. We'll talk about it later. Um, but yeah, this is this is obviously a very topical conversation. The future of work, the future of the on-demand economy. We're really we're really just getting going with it. Um, you know, a note on the millennial generation, it's 76 million large. It's the largest generation in our country right now. Baby boomers are 74 million, millennials are 76 million. This generation grew up with tools. This grew up with technology. And this is what they're gonna want. This is what they are wanting. Half of them want to start their own business. You know, this is a very entrepreneurial generation that we're going into and using technology as tools to facilitate that entrepreneurial activity. Um, again, we're just kind of scratching the surface. I think at Tiffany, I mean, that really, you asked the question, how big do you think this will be? Hearing off some of the stuff that Alex is saying, you know, these are things you would never associate with on demand. A lawyer or you know, like a designer, maybe but a lawyer. So I think this just show you shows you like how big this is and how you know how early we still are this in this in this world. That's true, because normally when you get a lawyer, you have to retain them for six months or a year. Sometimes you just need them for that one off project. So that, that is true. So as you mentioned, as the economy grows and the the gig and on-demand workforce, how do you separate yourself from the competitors? So like you said, you don't want to go to multiple apps to get one thing. How do you separate yourself from the other companies that are either currently here or will be here in the future to keep you engaged with using your application? Yeah, I mean, I mean for us, we're not really competing with any of these on-demand businesses. We're really there to facilitate, you know, the process to Bring acquire customers. Bring them all together. Customers. Exactly, right? So I think, you know, uh, it's really, uh, again, I mean, the whole hypothesis that we have is, again, people want to have you know, one relationship with one app or with one service that, you know, directs them to the places that they want to go. And I think, you know, every on-demand business is a, would be in very good shape to work together with us because, again, people, they're going to have problems to, again, acquire customers at scale and they will need, you know, again, like I th we really believe that digital assistants are the future, right? And and, and we're basically, basically, you know, commoditizing an uh, on-demand digital assistant that, that was never been there before, right? So, but of, of course, I mean, there's, there's, you know, uh, there's there's a fundamental kind of thing of how will these businesses, you know, look at, you know, competition and how will they? I mean, there's again, there's so many of, of like there's so many on demand businesses and there's they're getting more niche and more niche. So, you know, it's gonna be, I think there's gonna be a lot of stuff happening within the industry, within verticals in terms of constellation and uh, probably some business probably not existing anymore in a few years too, right? Yeah. What about you, Alex? Dealing with a lot of companies or creating companies to hire talent, but like you said, they're not really going into the creative space, which is one of the biggest spaces, especially for millennials. How will you separate yourself from either current or future uh, competitors? Yeah, I mean, first off, I think it's competition's healthy, so I'm yeah. not necessarily afraid of competition. I think more competition makes all of us better and allows us to innovate faster, so that that's fine. Um, if you think about the competition out there, you know, Odesk and Elance merged. Uh, last year, and that's a huge freelancer platform, right? The, the, the thing with, with Odesk and Elance and Upwork now, what, what they branded it as, is it's really more of a virtual workforce. If you're looking for um, co contract labor that's overseas, you know, arbitrage in terms of how much you're paying, uh, we're looking at, at a much more higher local, you know, empower your own communities. So I, I don't really see that as necessarily a competitor. It's, it, Upwork really is more of a race to the bottom. It's a lot of price wars that's happening for hourly rates. At Liquid Talent, we don't even show hourly rates. It's not about that. This is about facilitating a community of exceptional professionals and having them be on demand and accessible. Um, if you think about LinkedIn, you kind of think of that as more of a two-dimensional network. We have a very flat resume and it's a very uninspired, in my opinion, design platform. If you think about you know, Liquid Talent, we're trying to build a three-dimensional digital storefront where people can really get to know you, interact with you, and eventually, you know, contract pay and review you. So, um, again, competition, sure. There's, there's going to be people that are in Go Butlers and Liquid Talent spaces. I think if we keep our head down and focus and just keep doing what we believe in, you know, we're going to be successful. I agree. I think, you know, 100%, you know, competition at this point really helps us, I think, more than anything else. It shows validation. You know, Facebook entering our space is a huge validation for us. Obviously, it's competition too, but, you know, it helps more than, any, uh, than anything at this stage. So what online platforms are shaping this new economy to make more efficient and predictable? What uh, online platforms, you mentioned Uber, of course, so what online platforms would you say are really shaping the new economy of companies? Well, online talent platforms, McKinsey just came out with a really fascinating report. They said by 2025, online talent platforms could boost global GDP by $2.7 trillion. 
So we're just kind of going into this online talent platform marketplace, and, and I think really the sky's the limit on how it can affect our day-to-day -day lives. You know, there are some really cool on-demand apps out there. Um, my mom and I had dinner last night, and I had her download Uber for the first time, and watching her sign up for it was kind of like this awakening for me. It's really the UI UX test that every entrepreneurial digital founder needs to go through. Can your mom download it and sign up, and can it work? Hashtag mom test. Uh, it worked okay. She did okay with it. So Uber has a little bit more time to do there. You know, I'm a big fan of Seamless. Um, my girlfriend is a wonderful cook, but we certainly Seamless all the time. Um, I, I, I see fly cleaners all over the place right now. They clean your underwear, I guess. That sounds cool. I could use that. Um, you know, I'm, I'm excited to download Joe Butler. I think that's going to add a lot of value. You know, add some help to my life. Yeah. So I think you know a lot of the things you mentioned, the Seamless. Uh, flight cleaners, you know, the, the good thing about Gabotlo, you just, you know, you text our number 25400 and you tell us what you want. You tell us, hey, I want to get pizza or I want to get, you know, I want to get my laundry done and we'll find the, the right, you know, service to do with. And I think, you know, uh, uh, Uber has done a phenomenal job of making it as easy as possible, right? I think that's what people really want. You know, you only want to push a button. You don't really want to do anything else, right? So that's really how far people would like to go in mobile devices. So, yeah, I mean, I would say you got to think about Airbnb too, and it's just yeah. wild to think that strangers sleep in my bed. You know, I, I, I willingly <laughs> let random people off the street come into my home, have access to all my drawers and all, like, everything I own, you and sleep, and sleep in my bed, and, like, sleep in my pillow. I'm like, it's just crazy. It's crazy. And it's <laughs> totally natural now. Yeah. And it, and it works. It's just as natural as sitting in a stranger's car, right? Right, <laughs> right. Drive me here. It's, yeah. it's, a, it's, a whole, it's a whole new world, and, and these models are going to penetrate all aspects of our life. Um, there's really no stopping. Yeah, I'm still getting used to uh, Airbnb. I just started using it over the last two months. So it was a great concept, way cheaper than a hotel. But then when you, like you said, sleep in a stranger's bed, it's like, hey, <laughs> this is interesting, but definitely cheaper. And the same thing with Uber, when someone comes pick you up, you know, as an Uber, now they have signs, but before they didn't have signs. So you kind of just got into a stranger's car, basically. So it's definitely different. What I, don't want us to get, what I don't want us to do is go into a Wally world where we just basically sit back and have our phones be our remote controls yeah. and we all just drink milkshakes and, and do nothing. Like that's not, that's not the spirit of this. Yeah. The spirit of it is to have more efficiencies and do what we love and tap into our passions and live the lifestyle that we dream. It's, it, it's not to become lazy. Uh, and there's always two parts of this. I mean, you look at Uber from a consumer, consumer perspective, you know, it's, been, it's awesome. And you know, you also look at it from a workforce perspective and it's also revolutionized, you know, a lot of you know the, the taxi, the private drivers industry, right? So and giving people, you know, every time I get into Uber, I kind of try to engage with the drivers. Like, okay, you know, yeah, I'm just a lot more flexible. I have like a nice car. Uh, it's my own car. I can use it, you know, privately too. And it's you know, and and then I think you know, Airbnb and Uber have done a great job in building you know a community around their service. Why does Airbnb work? It's all about the community. And Uber is similar. You know, the very simple rating. You know, full kind of you know, full on both sides. You know, filters out you know bad actors. And it shows us the policy implications of this too. I mean, with De Blasio says we got to cap the amount of Uber drivers and Uber cars and analyze, you know, how this is affecting our taxi industry. You can't. It doesn't work that way. Innovation is going to win, right? So let it thrive. And I actually sat down with the head of Uber policy last week. The average Uber ride is actually two dollars to the city of New York, where the average taxi drive is fifty cents. So it's actually four x more gross revenue that's happening over to, through Uber rather than a, a taxi cab medallion. The, you gotta listen to the people. The people want it where you're gonna get it. And, and de Blasio can't just like keep a tap to them. That's my personal opinion. I think, you know, regulars are realizing that. I think, you know, there's always gonna be these things. I mean, in Europe, Ubers are having a lot of problems too. Yeah. Um, but, uh, but you know, I, I fully agree with Alex. Like, I think innovation at the end, of, people will wanna have better, better products, better, good products with, right? So before we take a question from the audience, I want to ask one last question. What is the future? What is the next step in maybe the next three to, three to six months for your company? We'll start with you, Liquid Talent. We're in stealth mode now. We've been testing multiple products. We have a mobile app that we're really excited about. I think the future of work is going to be much more mobile and enter into the wearable industry more. We are just about there getting our mobile app right. Um, our web platform is in stealth mode. We have some really incredible companies using us to source talent right now. Um, we're, we're excited to kind of be, you know, open to the world uh, sooner than later. Yeah. Um, but we got we, we have we, we have a little bit more work to do. But it's um, we're getting wonderful testimonials. My favorite part of my day is coming in and hearing talent and companies saying how it's working. That's just like that validation of real life use cases of this thing happening and working um, makes it all worth it. So I'm, I'm excited to share more. You know, when, when we're ready to. Awesome. Thank you.
What about Go? Yeah, so for us, it's really, you know, I mean, we launched around seven months ago, and, you know, we just want to every day continue to grow, continue to make, you know, more people's lives easier, and, you know, acquire customers that truly love our product. Um, uh, that's, that's the main thing. Besides, I think we've, you know, built up an extraordinary team, and uh, there is no specific goal. It's just like, you know, get more people to learn how they're using the service, make it better, improve our technology, and, uh, yeah, and scale. All right, awesome. So now we're going to take questions from the audience. Does anyone have any questions? Yes. Oh, can you stand up? Thank you. I had a question about Go Butler. Um, I was just thinking, I feel like the user experience is really important through like um, app interfaces. Do you think you'll develop an app for your, for your platform? Because I feel like it, it gives users a lot more control maybe when they have more information about where their services are coming from. That was just a thought. Okay, so there's you know there's advantages and disadvantages to to texting. So a lot of people actually love that they can just text us and that you don't need to download an app. Uh, I fully agree that in an app, you know, you can you know provide people or users with a richer experience, and there's more stuff actually for you know the heavy users who are coming back to use it every single day. For acquisition, though, I think text is just awesome because there's no friction. Um, we're looking at you know different communication channels. Uh, can't say too much, but we're definitely looking at you know app is definitely one option to improve their experience. For users. Any other questions? Yes. Thank you. Um, as far as the on demand workforce, do you guys ever worry that the younger generation will only be using this and the actual people who are doing that work for them every day will disappear? I mean, you're like talking about millennials, they all want to be entrepreneurs, they all want to create something. What about the people that are actually coming to your house and fixing something for you or cleaning something for you? Is that something you guys think about or? I think Alex? I think it's, I think it's, I think it's, well, it's a great question, it's a great point. I mean, the people that are on the Liquid Talent team are entrepreneurs. They may not be the founders, but they're entrepreneurs. So. You know, they're, they're creating something with us in the spirit of our vision, and, and they're part of that collective entrepreneurial spirit. So I totally think that our team is entrepreneurial. You know, I think for the blue-collar workforce, um, that's, that's a whole different kind of can of worms. Um, we, we obviously need that labor force to help drive our day-to-day -day life, and they're a lot of times the unsung heroes of our cities, you know? Um, I, I, would, I would imagine that access to like, like what Gold Butler is doing is just allowing them more opportunities, allowing them to earn higher wages, and, and, and put their skills to, to use. Same, same with the, you know, the upper end economy too, right? If you're a UI UX mobile designer in high demand, let's feature you, let's even get you more opportunities, let's see that wage rate even go higher. So it's, it's a great point. I think it's, you know, I think it's very much like a sociological question, you know, like it's a lot of like psychology, education, how does that, I, so I fully agree, I think, you know, there are probably way too many people out there who wanna do their own business to the point there, well, they're, they won't be able to have any employees kind of, right? Um, so it's, it's you know, it's, I think it's the great to have these, you know, aspirations, and then some people will make it, you know, some people will realize, hey, not ev like not everyone is born to be a founder of a business. I mean, hey, Alex, we both can talk, like there's a lot of challenges. It's fun, but it's also very challenging. There's a lot of, you know, work that not everyone really wants to do. You, maybe you go through it once in college, you kind of do your side project, your own business, and you're like, oh no, that's not really what I want to do. But obviously, like, you know, it's a result of really a lot of people encouraging that too, right? So I don't think it comes out of nowhere. You know, a lot of schools are like focusing on entrepreneurship. So do I think you know it's? I think I, I think the benefits outweigh you know the risk of having you know to, no, no one in the workforce. All right. So we're almost done. So we're going to do a final word from Alex and Naveed. You know, first and foremost, thank you guys for being here and listening and your attention. Is, we you know we really appreciate that. Tonight we're hosting a very special event that's in partnership with Tech Week. Liquid Talent is one of the city sponsors of Tech Week. We're hosting a Future of Work Summit at Civic Hall, 156 Fifth Avenue, where we're gonna really dive in for three hours about the future of work and this on-demand economy. Um, so please join us, there's still a few seats left. I'd love to see you guys there. We're kicking off at six. Um, so if, if you want, are hungry for more Future of Work and on-demand conversation, join us this evening at Civic Hall. Thanks. It's great. Unfortunately, we're not hosting a party, but uh, but I think you know, I think this was a yeah. I'll come join you guys. So I think you know, thanks again for listening. I think that this is you know interesting, and we could probably talk about this for hours. 
Um, I'd say you know, go on GoBonkers.com, try our service, and and get get a feel what you know on demand the on demand features. Great, thank you so much. Thank you.